Hello everyone and thank you for joining me. Today I want to talk a little bit about uh, art history while I draw. And the reason for this, I was inspired by this piece looking at the face and it reminded me of an ancient pharaoh from Egypt. And I'm not sure what it was about this face that reminded me, I think just the strength and the elongation of the face and maybe a little bit of the headdress. Um, but anyway, I wanted to talk a little bit about that pharaoh while I complete this piece for you. Akhenaten started his life as Amenhotep IV, and he was surely the most unusual ruler in the history of ancient Egypt. During his 17 year reign from 1353 and 1336 BCE, he radically transformed the political, spiritual, and cultural life of the country. He founded a new religion honoring a supreme god, the life-giving sun deity, Aten, represented by the sun's disk, and changed his own name in about 1348 BCE to Akhenaten, which means one who is effective on behalf of the Aten. So basically, we have Amenhotep the fourth. He comes into power by a family dynasty, just like all the pharaohs before him. And he says, hey, I'm going to change things up a bit. Why don't we just worship the sun now? Why don't we worship Aten? And I don't necessarily think the Egyptians were down with that, even though when he was ruler, um, you know, they're basically forced to follow along. But Amenhotep IV was also the most hated king eventually because of this change in religion. Historians refer to Akhenaten's reign as the Armana period. And in the new Armana style, Akhenaten's reign not only saw the creation of new capital and the rise of new religious focus, it also led to radical changes in royal artistic conventions. For instance, in the portraits of kings, artists use startling stylations, even physical distortions. The new royal figure style can be seen in a colossal statue at the Akhenaten, uh, which is about 16 feet tall, and it was created for a new temple um, for the Aten that Akhenaten or Amenhotep built near the temple complex of Karnak. This colossal statue portrait was placed in one of the porticos of a huge courtyard. The courtyard measured 426 feet by 394 feet, and the statue or the portrait was oriented to the movement of the sun. The sculpture has an androgynous feel to it, and a lot of modern viewers have that same sentiment. If you look at the sculpture, you can see there's a roundy belly or like a sagging stomach. And then the thighs are exaggerated as well. They're kind of inflated and they're in contrast with the spindly little arms and the protruding collarbones. Um, you can see the long neck of the sculpture. And then the facial features are also really exaggerated. Like the eyes, they're, they're slit like eyes and um, they turn downward and then you've got these huge sensuous lips that are flanked by dimples um, and the dimples almost kind of have this like cheekiness to them it, it seems like um, there's like a half smile you know like that half smile you try to make for your passport photo when they tell you not to smile but you're like no my face looks better when I'm smiling that kind of smile um, which make the uh it makes this statue even more interesting to me because it does express a little bit of emotion. And, and that's like a deviation from convention um, because some of the other uh, statues did not have that. They were more stark. Amenhotep IV 
or Akhenaten, was married to Queen Nefertiti. And she stood behind him in his quest for the new religion where they worshipped the sun. Queen Nefertiti and Akhenaten, they had six daughters, uh, which I think is kind of cool. And the new Armana style was used not only for official portraits, um, but it was also used in pictorial relief sculptures. And there's one famous one of um, Akhenaten and Queen Nefertiti and uh, a few of their daughters, and it portrays the family life of the king and queen. And they're kind of sitting on little stools and they're playing with their their daughters. And you can see in this um, relief that the daughters also have these elongated heads, which was a practice that happened with uh, royalty, nobility, higher up people. And their heads also seem to be shaved. Um, and you can see how there's the sun disc at the top. And then it looks like the couple, they're receiving blessings from Otten, or you can see the rays coming down from Otten. Um, and they end uh, right at the hands of the Pharaoh. Um, and then the king, he's holding one child and it looks like the child is pulling herself towards the king for a kiss. It's, I love this relief. It's so interesting to me. And in the piece that I'm doing, I do have some figures hanging off of this piece. Um, I don't know if they're necessarily the children of this main um, image in my piece, but I think that the inspiration from this uh, pictorial relief is where I um, kind of my starting place for it's just mind-boggling to me that in the long course of Egyptian history I guess this is the same for human civilization in general there have been a few figures that have you know polarized us and Akhenaten was one of them he was so polarizing for the period surrounding um, this Egyptian king's reign there was a lot of social, political, and religious upheaval going on. And in that time, they had never seen anything like this. Um, you know, prior to Akhenaten's reign, we just, we went along with the flow. We passed power down through family dynasties. Um, everything was copacetic. We moved on. But just in under two decades on the throne, Akhenaten, he imposed new aspects of Egyptian religion. He overhauled the royal artistic style. He moved Egypt's capital to a previously unoccupied site. Um, there were a lot of changes that people were like, hey, what's going on? What, what are we doing here? And, you know, he attempted to obliterate, 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 I don't even know what I'm saying, obliterate the names and images of some of uh, Egyptians' traditional gods, which, like I said before, people were just going along with it because, you know, that's what you did. The religion of Aten is not completely understood today, and this is the religion that Akhenaten and his wife Nefertiti worshipped. They worshipped only the sun god and the names of other gods and goddesses were removed from view. The funerary religion of or Cyrus was dropped and Akhenaten became the source of blessings for people after death. But this religious and artistic renaissance was short-lived. I mean, Akhenaten made himself unpopular by closing the old temples. And this lack of enthusiasm for the practical duties of kingship was detrimental to Egypt's imperial interests. Um, there are surviving documents that show that Akhenaten paid little attention to the army, the navy, all that stuff you need to pay attention to when you're uh, head of state, so to speak. Um, foreign trade began to fall off, internal taxes began to disappear into the pockets of local officials. I mean, you know, it was crazy. I think it was definitely a change that happened 
um, basically overnight. And um, the people were feeling uneasy about it. Ock Norton had some, some push. He had some push back then. He was an intellectual and philosophical kind of a revolutionary guy and he had the power and wealth to indulge in his ideas however the ancient egyptians i think like a, a lot of humans were deeply religious people who loved their ancient traditions and they just were not ready to embrace such radical changes it would not be until the christian era that Egyptians would finally reject the old gods in favor of a single universal deity. This uh, excerpt from an article on thoughtco.com, uh, this kind of sums it up. As a replacement for a 2000 year old tradition, Akhenaten's religion lacked some important underpinnings. In particular, uh, an afterlife, you know, everyone believed in an afterlife. That's what they were um, striving for, aiming for, hoping for. It's the one thing that keeps us going on earth with all of our trials and tribulations. And his religion of worshiping Ra or Aten, the sun, it didn't have any of that. Instead of having a detailed pathway for people to follow, shepherd by Osiris, people could only hope to be awake, reawakened in the morning to bask in the sun's rays. Now, to me, that sounds like a dream come true. And yeah, I want to be a sun worshiper, especially, um, you know, in these rainy days in the North Pacific Northwest. But um, the people living uh, on the Nile did not agree. <laughs> After a brutal reign of 17 years, Akhenaten died, and his successor, who may have been Nefertiti, immediately but slowly started dismantling the physical elements of Akhenaten's religion. His son, Tutankhamun, and the earliest 19th dynasty pharaohs continued to tear down the temples. They chiseled out Akhenaten's name and they slowly but surely started to bring back the old traditional forms of belief. Yay, we're back in our cozy comfort zone. <laughs> and although there was no recorded dissension or pushback from the people while the king lived, once he was gone, boy, they were like, yeah, let's tear this wallpaper down. We starting to, we gonna remodel now. We are going to remodel the house. And that's what they did. And, you know, um, he wasn't a well-liked king. As hated as Akhenaten was, I think we should give him a little bit of props. Uh, all, a lot of scholars agree that there's this idea that Akhenaten was the pioneer of monotheistic religion. I mean, hello, that's a big deal. Um, so even though he was radical in his ideas and beliefs um, and I think pushed those changes on the people he was ruling and the people of his time um, and they eventually went back to um, their polytheistic uh, religious views we now know today that his vision so to speak had a huge impact on future religions. Akhenaten's rediscovery and the early excavations sparked great public interest in the pharaoh and his queen Nefertiti. Um, he has been described as mysterious and revolutionary, the greatest idealist of the world and you know the first individual in history to do this but he was also seen as fanatic and possibly insane and you know what you might argue those two uh, uniquely go together public and scholarly fascination with Akhenaten comes from his connection with Tutankhamun and the unique style and high quality of the pictorial arts he pa he patronized and also, I guess, the religion that he attempted to establish, which foreshadowed 
monotheism. And this brings me back to the inspiration for the piece that I did today. Um, like I said at the beginning of this video, it has the face that kind of reminds me a little bit of Akhenaten. I hope you enjoyed this video and a little bit of information and background about this interesting time in history. Thank you for joining me today. I had fun making this video and I hope you had fun watching it.